sushi and fries. Okay, welcome to the first installment of sushi and fries. Um, today we will be looking at a uh, exposure blended picture, the one you see here. Um, this was taken, I actually wanted to be there a little bit earlier because I wanted to have the pink clouds here appear but I got there about maybe 10 minutes too late and the pink was gone but uh, instead I had a real fiery sky. Um, I took three exposures and uh, actually only used two because I had all the information I needed um, for this example and this is what I came up with and now I'll try to quickly go through the steps I did um, to get here. So I tried to recreate it, probably will look something different, but um, just to get you, to show you the techniques, etc. I'll be using um, raw therapy, I'll be using GIMP, and I'll be using Hugen. Hugen for the uh, blending, raw therapy for developing the raw files into TIFFs, which then get blended in Hugin, then uh, develop the blended TIFF in raw therapy again, and then just, I don't know if I'll show this, but just the fr white frame I added in GIMP. Okay, so let's get started. Let's start with the raw therapy. Um, these are the two pictures. This is basically the dark exposure and the middle exposure uh, of the three. I did plus minus two stops, so this is basically zero minus two stops. <clears throat> um, so I'll start with this one. First of all, we need these two images. These are raw files. We need these two as TIF, as TIFF files, in order to import them into Hugin, which then can do the stitching. Um, so I'll show you the neutral setting, so the raw file as it is. What did I go for? So this is the br uh, the dark exposure, which means this will give you give us the information for the sky. So I just did a very few things. First of all, go to the raw tab, enable auto correction for chromatic aberration. This is always good to do. Then, um, as a starter, I just did. Uh, on the exposure tab, I use the auto levels just to see where it will get me. Um, it normally does very nice uh, exposures, and it, in this case also, but it is looking at the whole picture, so it's trying to get the best out of everywhere. But we're not interested in the shadows down here, so um, we don't want it to compress the highlights. And we will just go back down with our exposure until uh, the peak, you can see on the histogram that the red channel is peaking until the peak is gone and we're back into the safes part and everything is fine. Somewhere like this. <clears throat> okay, we don't care about the the dark part. Uh, it has added some contrast. I'm okay with that because it's added some contrast to the overall picture. Um, also to the part we want. Then I just uh, used some white balance. I checked this before and I'm quite happy with the camera's white balance. The only thing I actually did pay attention and I know that the sky here where it's very light blue in this upper part between the band of the clouds and the clouds up here, it was actually a little bit of greenish so uh, what is a teal colored little greenish tint so I'll just pull up the green till I get what I want somewhat li like this it looked like more or less um, okay so we're done with the white balance I will not add color or anything right now we will do this later onto the whole picture I'll leave it as this um, export as 16-bit TIFF. Uh, this is the folder I want to put it to. I just add a, a sign that it's from coming from the raw therapy and export. Okay, next I went back to the file browser. 
So I basically just took um, everything I did here by um, copying the processing profile and then I just went to this file which now you can already see the develop one but I'll just do it and then you can just paste the processing and it will basically add to this image all the things we did here which is let's have a look at this one this is the middle exposure so now we're looking for the lower part and basically it's added the custom color uh, the white balance we did it's already added the sorry the where is it chromatic aberration here it's checked and it will have the same exposure which the last picture had which is makes no sense in this one so we'll reset this one go to auto levels let's see what it what he does with it okay so now we're interested in the lower part he's trying to keep to save the sky we don't need highlight record instruction because we don't care about the sky in this picture but we care about the foreground so we'll reset the contrast because he's pulling the dark parts even deeper into the dark parts and we'll add a uh, control cage curve and I would suggest using perceptual because then the colors don't change so much and basically we're looking at the dark parts so we're looking everything which is left from the middle so if we want to have a brighter dark part um, if you want really want to highlight the dark parts you would have to pull the histogram up here but I don't want that I like that it's a little bit subdued just want to pull it up in the middle so we will maximize contrast something like maybe this and it will pull up the dark parts again we are blowing out the sky but we don't care about this okay yeah it's could be okay let's see let's go a little bit more radical we don't need it to be too bright something like this basically that is all that I'll be doing okay so done with this export again mark it as coming from raw therapy boom okay done so these are the two pictures we have this is our exposure for the foreground and this is our exposure for the sky okay so now we're in Hugin um, this is the starting page we just go to add images uh, select the two images we have just developed in raw therapy then go to the feature matching settings choose align image stack because we're not building panoramas here we we want to have them perfectly aligned create control points then we go to optimize positions and we use position and view okay done then we go here to the um, fast preview panorama and uh, we center the whole thing M move and drag center here you then go to projection now you can choose if you want the equirectangular which is basically what we had or you go to rectilinear which will give us some kind of curvature here or cylindrical you can choose all kinds of thing we'll go we'll stay with the equirectangular which is not what I did in my original image but anyway um, okay center I already did that go to crop auto crop and then go back to the other page go to the stitcher tab choose calculate optimal size then select only this one here exposure fuse trim stack this is what does your exposure fusion if you want to have the images both images aligned and uh, cropped correctly for doing manual blending then you would need to select this one as well no exposure correction low dynamic range um, but I won't do this right now so just stitch um, select where you want to save the Hugen project and it's stitching okay it's done with the stitching um, this is our fused image uh, you can see we have all the sky 
colors and we have a little bit more detail in the foreground. Okay, back in uh, raw therapy, this is the fused image we just imported. Um, it's, it's still a 16-bit TIFF, so we can do a lot of things in raw therapy. First of all, I wanted to have a rectangular crop, so I'll... I mean, this is just my decision because I'm working on some rectangular crops. It would work perfectly f well as it is. I'll go rectangular, um, press shift and then a left mouse button. You can select where to go with your crop. I want to have this valley here in the middle. This line will start in the corner, lead to the castle to the left and the church on the right hand side. Okay that's my crop then go back to the exposure tab add let's let let him do auto levels i don't want the highlights to be compressed so i'll cancel that go back with the exposure until i'm not overexposing maybe go a little bit no that's okay actually because i forgot we will be adding a graduated filter um, you can click on this little icon to make the filter visible or the the position visible. Pull it where we want it. Make the icon oh, turn the icon off again, and then just let's see. I want to darken the sky so we get. I want the focus to be somewhere around here. I like. I actually do really like the the gray tones we have here that you can kind of see the church here maybe you can see it here the church in the middle and we have the castle silhouette and we have this the other church over here and i don't want to make this graduated filter too strong just to show you because if we go overboard it puts the foreground into the foreground which could work for some pictures but i don't think this foreground is that interesting it's cool because it it has these 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 lines the basically the path leading to the castle so as a leading element it's very nice but it's as a dominant element i don't think so so we'll just put it somewhere around here so we still have the yeah that's okay maybe yeah, more or less so this center of attention is still around here okay so this is done um now's the time we could see ah, let's see going back to the exposure tab let's see if we want to have the contrast that high we could turn it down probably i'll turn it hmm. let's see the histogram now we could go much higher with the exposure compensation we have much more room for playing also a little bit with the black point we could though I don't want it to be too black okay so yeah that's okay so we're using the whole histogram again now where am I sorry okay now lab adjustment we need more color um, but I want to use it as you saw I will use it with a white frame so you can select the background here up here in uh, raw therapy um, now this is version 5.3, if you have another one, this will look a little different, but up here you can select the background. Um, I'd like to have more color, but not... I wouldn't want it to be overly colorful, let's see. I don't want to be like this. I'm looking for somewhere... Let's go reset, somewhere like this. Okay but I'm still missing some color here in the darker parts. So I'll go to chrominance by luminance, parametric. Basically chrominance is your how colorful things will be. And you can select this differently for shadows, darks, lights, and highlights. Now the sky is quite colorful already. I'd like to have a little more color down here just to show you where I'm working on. Pull it to the extreme so it works especially down here. So I would probably go somewhere like this. Just add a little bit of color, not too much. Um, you can check with everything. If you pull the lights up, you see the clouds will start glowing, but the 
orange part would just be too strong, at least in my opinion. We can pull this up a little bit so we get more glow up here in the clouds. I don't want this area in the middle to be too strong, so maybe if we pull the highlights down, this will kind of weaken. Uh, it's, it's not very noticeable. And I will pull, uh, let's see, the Pull the shadows down. I don't want so much color in the shadows, <clears throat> which normally has the effect that you can pull the darks a little bit higher. Okay, I'm actually happy with, with the look. As I want to have a white frame, I always go one step back like this and see how it how it works. So I can already see that it's it's quite dark. It works well on a gray background or in a black one it actually shines a little bit but compared to a white frame it's very dark so I will probably pull up the lightness and I'm looking for some lighter pastel like qualities not too in your face okay so to finish things off we'll add in a, a turn curve go to the control cage again use reset the curve use perceptual and okay what I want to do is I want to have these tones here you can select this little icon here and then if you go over the picture it will show you where you are in the histogram mm, on the right hand side here on the left hand histogram you actually see it all the time so these gray areas I want to have a little more separation so I just check where I am and then I'll add a contrast curve there so basically I need to go from here to here and I need to just pull up the contrast a little bit here just to show you without with just to pull this area out. Let's see how it looks on on the overall picture. Something it will also pull this oops the sky up a little bit, but that's okay with me. But it just makes this area here a little bit more visible and actually makes it even more uh, foggy. We could add some contrast by details. This is the magic sauce of raw therapy. Um, there's five levels. The zero level you don't want to touch. The first level, the one and two levels you will only see when zoomed in at 100%. So the first level just gives you grain, very sharp grainy detail, which I don't want. I want some of this. Good trick is just pull it up all the way, see which size it does enhance and then select it. I will want a little bit of this one just to get some more of the details here and maybe let's go one step back some of level 4 and let's see what level 5 does yeah but very little so I'll just add a little bit of level 4 and a little bit of level 5. What it does is level 4 and 5 kind of add a little bit of local contrast. I've done it very subtly. This is without, with, maybe you can't notice this on the video, but it's there. Okay, done. Exporting it. Um, I'll just call it final. This is our image. It looks a little pale because we I want to have it like this because I want to have a pastel like quality with a white border. Okay, we're in GIMP, just adding a border. Basically I've imported the TIFF file, the final TIFF file. We'll just go to uh, image canvas size, um, set it to percent, um, lock the ratio. I selected 115%, resize, add another layer, a new one, fill this one with the color white, bucket tool, fill it, 
pull it to the back then select the actual image go to the alignment tool select this image align center align center uh, vertical and horizontal Let's see the whole image so this is what it looks like now we could do some finishing touches here if we think it's still too dark or needs more color or whatever we could all do it here but i'm done i'll export it final g for gimp i'll export it as tif file so i'm still can do everything i want to um, this is our final image and i like it quite a lot i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and see you next time